On July the 30th, Kate Bush was 21. A bustling, always active person, she was hard at work on her next album after 18 months of calculated success. A convent girl from Bexley in Kent, she'd been playing music with her brothers almost before she could walk. Her father, a doctor, had always been interested in their songs and their singing, and by age 16, Kate had already been spotted by EMI as potential talent. But the family and record company agreed that Kate Bush should wait several years before launching a full blast career. A period of apprenticeship that gave her the stability to survive the star making process. The first time you sang in public, do you remember that? Yeah, that was about two years ago in a pub in Lewisham. <laughs> and I was so scared, I really was. But um, once you're up there, it's different, you know, you just forget all about it because. They're there to see you and you have to give it to them. Was it a good reception? Yes, it was. I mean, considering it was a pub and we were totally unknown, they were very good, very respectful. It was good, yeah. Have you had bad experiences? Yeah, a couple in the pubs, actually, because sometimes you get audiences that you can't predict. And one particular night we were in Putney um, on the eve of the football match between Scotland and England and all the Scottish guys were in there. And they were mad, they were just mad. They had flags waving everywhere. No one could see the stage because all the guys were getting up on the stage, you know, and putting their arms around you. And it was a bit hard to keep singing when everyone was like getting up on stage and poking sticks in your eye. But uh, they were good, they were good people. Did you ever consider doing something else other than being a singer? Yeah. When I was at school, I wanted to be a vet and a psychiatrist, but I didn't really, I didn't really want to be, that was just, I suppose to keep people happy to think that if I did get a career it would be a straight one. But it wasn't what I wanted to do at all. Did you do things like A-levels and O-levels? I took O-levels and my mock A's but I left before. How many O's did you get? <laughs> I got ten. Ten? Yeah. They must have been disappointed when you went off to sing. I don't think so, no. I think they thought I was a bit foolish. But um, I thought it was right. Was there one day when you decided, that's it, I'm going to be a singer, I'm going to make that a career? Yes, there was. 
Uh, I didn't think there would have been, but one day I was with a friend in a park and I just knew that was what I wanted to do. I had to leave school and I had to do it. And I'm very glad I did. In early January this year, Kate Bush had never performed before an important live audience. She had several successful singles to her name, a couple of albums in the charts, a string of TV appearances, but in a sense she was a media singer. When she took the decision to go on tour, no one doubted how important it could prove to her career. Because most live artists make their mistakes either in private or before a very small audience. Tonight, here at the Liverpool Empire, Kate Bush starts at the top, before several thousand. She can't afford to fail. The planning started in earnest three months ago. A series of corridor discussions led to phone calls and then a production meeting. Time, space and even furniture can never be found. And most of the early and therefore important decisions were taken where people just ended up. Sometimes in the back room of a friend of a friend. Has anyone spoken to Musicians Union about this? Or PRS? No, the MU. Has anybody mentioned it to the MU? No. Not specifically, no. Because I have had instances before with people using tapes where the MU have picked up on it. You've re-recorded the backtrack with the we band. Are yeah, we, we are re-recording it. We are re-recording it. There's no agency for tour personnel. It's who you know, and more important, who's available. Altogether, the tour would employ 40 people. While the production team was still coming together, Kate Bush was working on her dancing. Two, get the head over, three, get the head over, further, keep the left leg working all the time, and up. Two, three, four, five, right in front of the mouth, stretch, stretch, and down, now to up again, two, three. Now you three, might five, think that Kate Bush is in pretty good shape, but a dancing five, instructor had three stretch, weeks to produce stretch, a super fit stretch, body, down, capable down, of enduring down, two hours of gruelling exertion. Four, and side out, two, change in, and. One. A doctor's daughter, not yet 21, with all the pressures of a £200,000 tour on her shoulders, selecting and rejecting the best advice she could find and buy. And centre, and out. OK. One of our problems is that uh, Kate is dancing better and better. I mean, I'm teaching her, and she's, she's uh, working. It's incredible how far she's got. I wouldn't have thought it was possible. And... Uh, the problem now is that she's getting so good at dancing that it's going to be hard to keep her from dancing so that she can sing properly. I mean, it would be fantastic if we could put the whole show on, um, on a recorder and then she could mime it and then dance. We can't do that. She's got to sing it. So we've got to fit the dancing to, to the singing. What, you mean she'd be out of breath? Oh, yeah. I mean, you could, she couldn't dance as the way she could dance possibly and sing at the same time. So somehow we've got to work it out so that it all fits in properly. The broader ideas were usually Kate's. The choreography often a case of trial and error, with Anthony Van Last cutting back on her more enthusiastic contortions. Nearly every day meant shaping another song, or perfecting the one they'd started yesterday. It's important that the visuals are just emphasising the music, because it's not a dance show. It's a, a music show that's being illustrated with movement and it's important that they both complement each other. And I've only, I mean, I'm not a dancer. I'm just learning to dance. And what I can do, I'll try and put across in the show, but I'm not a dancer. I just love dancing. And um, I want to be able to learn as much as I can. <laughs> Every lunchtime, after leaving her dancing practice physically drained, she'd drive across the Thames to Greenwich to rehearse the music. At Wharf Studios, the best available place, with the right facilities for just running through the songs time and time and time again.
However many times they'd tried it before, they still kept going until it was perfect every time. Whereas with the dancing, she was still uncertain and happy to listen, with the music, Kate Bush knew exactly what she wanted. A tight, punchy sound, if anything, better than the record. We're not just reproducing the albums here. You know, we're, you know I mean, you're a, when you're a band, you have your own identity, you know, and if you're just reproducing albums, you know, there's not much point in having a band, you know, I mean, you might as well just play the album. Does she ever lose her temper with you? No, I mean, do you ever lose your temper with it? Lose my temper? No. Come on, let's get on with it. Wow, we've got to get together more because it's not sounding as it should be yet. It's not tight enough. They have to be tight. And especially the fact that we're going to be doing movement to the music, the music has to be very, very together and precise. And that's what we're trying to achieve. You know it's not for you. He just holds his breath. I think the main reason why they listen to me is because <laughs> I'm paying the wages and that it's my music and I think they have enough respect for me, I hope, not to turn around and say you don't know what you're talking about. How much like the record will your music finally be in the concert? That is a problem um, because obviously the albums have been very carefully produced and you've got mixed levels and everything um, and for live work to a certain extent we couldn't do it exactly as the album is, even if we wanted to, because it wouldn't come across in a strong way. For a live performance, you have to be aware of the fact that making things more obvious so as people can hear them, trying to possibly make songs quicker. It was a combination of strong personality and discipline that kept Kate Bush in control of eight accomplished musicians, some of them playing professionally while she was still at school. And she had the help of her two brothers. One of them, Paddy, had even found special instruments for the tour. What do you call it? It's called uh, Astramento de Porco. That's its, its real name. Or at least the name that uh, Pretorius gave it. He was a writer on musical instruments in the 17th century. What, what do you use it for? Um, we concert? use it, well, we use it for uh, a number with a Islamic flavor to it called Kashka from Baghdad. And uh, it sounds like a, a santur, which is traditional Arabian instrument played with hammers, just like this. You're Kate's brother, aren't yeah, you? Yeah, afraid so. Is it sort of a bit of a family business, really? Um, well, yes and no. I mean, like, Kate and I have been making music together for years and years, on different levels, you know, but, I mean, there's always been music in our family. My other brother, John, he played, and I was in a band with him when I was about 13 or 14. Are you nervous about the concert tour? A little apprehensive, no. I think it would be good fun, actually. Really good fun. I mean, we're so well rehearsed as far as it goes, and the music will take care of itself. <laughs> By early March, the whole team moved out to Shepparton for more space and practice. The music was finally how she wanted it, but the other details had yet to click. Some of the equipment had proven unsuitable, and more still had to be ordered, often costing thousands of pounds. And above all, one major problem had yet to be solved. She wouldn't be able to dance and sing and hold a microphone at the same time. An entirely new vocal sound system would have to be developed. How complicated has the sound been for the tour? Uh, very complicated, actually. We've had uh, quite a few problems to work on. Um, Mainly the making up of Kate herself um, from the dance point of view. How have you solved that? Um, with a very small microphone. <laughs> a small mic on a boom arm. It's, uh, it's going to be used from the side of her head. Half a dozen complete outfits were in their final stages, every single one capable of being changed quickly between songs. Yeah, yeah, right. And I think without actually having cobwebs all over you, I think this is the nearest you're going to get to cobwebs without it. And for the dancers... With three weeks to go, Kate Bush was more like an executive than a singer, 
making a series of decisions almost every hour. Every detail, every colour, every texture, she helped to decide. Even the choice of the crew food was partly influenced by her and produced by her other brother, John. Well, we've got nothing really difficult, but there are a lot of vegetarians involved, about 16. And uh, my wife's been cooking for, for the last few days, and it's working out really well. Everybody likes it. It's all going very fast. It's almost a vegetarian tour, isn't it? Yeah, you could say that, yes. Yeah. Well, it's good food because it, uh, it lets people carry on working afterwards. They're not walking around really laid out with a normal great meat meal. Last week, the preparations climaxed at London's Rainbow Theatre, specially booked for the final run-through. In conditions of surprising secrecy, the last wrinkles were gradually ironed out. After two and a half months of intense hard work, Everyone, including Kate herself, was holding up well. By then, the entire tour, finishing with four nights at the Palladium, had been sold out. You say we're fantastic, but still we don't have the The most difficult ones are where I've got the headset and I'm moving a lot. It's an amazing feeling of freedom because like, there's nothing in your hands yet you can hear your voice being projected miles away, it's incredible. But um, it's not quite in its full design yet, there are just a few things that are wrong with it. And it's not always right in front of my mouth, but we're getting that scene too. With only one week to go before opening, how do you think the rehearsals have gone so far? I think they're going very well. Um, there's a lot of rushing, but there always is at this time, and that's when most gets done. I think it's going well. was for a fully integrated dancing, singing, clowning, conjuring, acting, poetical effect show, throwing everything in and just hoping it would hold together. <laughs> On the last dress rehearsal, it finally did. And although at first they wouldn't admit it, they were ready for Liverpool. There'll never be another night quite like the first Kate Bush show at the Liverpool Empire. Even parts of the audience were nervous, wondering if the young lady with brittle voice had brittle nerves as well. But her manager, Hilary Walker, was carefully hiding any fear she had. It, it has been hard work every day, seven days a week, but it's really been a question of getting the right people to do the right jobs at the right time and pulling them all together and making a big team and making it work. Are you nervous about tonight? Uh, excited, I think. We, I think we all are. Yes, we're all nervous, of course we are. But fingers crossed. <laughs> it means a lot, doesn't it? Yes, it does. After just one song, we knew. She was a sensation. Her reputation was safe, and more. Kate Bush was thoroughly enjoying herself during the greatest test of her life.
I'm knocked out. I can't believe that audience. Worth that three months' hard work? Oh, well worth it. I, I'm just completely knocked out, really. They're amazing. In all, the six week sellout tour was seen by 100,000. Kate Bush had proved to her audience, at least, an all round entertainer. She's back now to the recording studio, comfortably working on her third album. Don't you have a problem now? What next? How you're going to follow the success? Well, you see, pe people say this to me, and I don't really look at it that way because it's not a matter of following success. It's things have happened, you've done them in the past, and you see things wrong in them, and you want to go on and you want to do them right. And I, I think that's all it is, you know. It's just the desire to want to keep doing things better. And I don't really see it as following a great success because if I did, I'd get really paranoid and I probably wouldn't be able to do a thing. I'd be so worried about doing something better than that, whereas you're just in the present moment and you're doing what you're doing. Are you likely to change your style completely, suddenly? I don't know. I'd quite like to in a way because I think change is a very important thing um, on any level. And I, I do want to change not only as a person but uh, as a musician. And I, th I think it's starting to happen a little, just slightly different. What's the most satisfying thing you do then? The most satisfying thing, I guess when you've actually written the song and you, you think about what's going to happen to it in the future, the fact that it maybe will have strings on it and voices. And Who do you first play it to? Well, it always used to be my father. When I lived at home, the first thing I'd do was grab him out of his chair and say, listen to this, and I'd put him down and play him all this rubbish. But now I think it, it's probably either John Kelly, my engineer, or one of my brothers and still my father, now and again. It's always got to be someone that I know their judgment is good, people I trust. And if they said it was rubbish? If they said it was rubbish, I'd think about it, but if I didn't think it was rubbish, then I'd, I'd still carry on with it. You have to believe in yourself. You can't just accept what other people say all the time, otherwise you become them and not yourself. Do you ever worry that your confidence might go? It goes, yes, it goes a lot. And you sit there and think, I shouldn't, you know, oh, where's my purpose? I'm nothing. And, and then something will happen that will just make you see that you're just a tiny little thing just trying to do your best and that's all you can do, so that's cool. Are you ambitious? I think I must be. I don't think I want to be ambitious, but I must be to want to put up with all this to carry on. You're now just over 21 and you've made it. What is there left to do now? Everything, <laughs> yeah. I haven't really begun yet. I've begun on one level, but then that's all gone now, so you begin again. I is, think is there exciting. ever a chance that you might give up, get married, settle down, be an ordinary mother, say? Obviously, there is a chance because I'm a human, and humans are very unpredictable. But uh, I don't know, I don't see that happening to me, not for a while. I've got so much to do, and I think freedom it's important to be able to do all those things. What will Kate Bush be like at 31? Any idea? I don't know, probably a few more lines. <laughs> I hope they're happy ones. And a few more songs? Yeah, I hope so. That's, that's what I want to do, that's what I'm here for. Yeah. 